life is hard for two reasons. It's hard because you're living in your comfort zone. It's also hard because you're trying to live outside of your comfort zone, right? And so, you know, if we know that life is hard because you're living in your comfort zone and it's hard when you're trying to live outside of your comfort zone and kind of stretch your opportunities, stretch your horizons, try new things, then maybe if life is all about being hard, we have to choose our hard. Do you want the hard of regret when you're older and you're on your deathbed and regretting the opportunities you didn't take, the risks you didn't take, the experiences you didn't have? Or do you want the hard of each time you took those risks and opportunities and had those experiences, yeah, they were overwhelming, yeah, they were hard, yeah, it freaked you out, but it ended up making you a better human, right? And so, you know, when we talk about suffering introduces a man to his highest self, well, you can really take suffering and just leave discomfort. If you take away suffering and leave discomfort, you realize that the only difference between discomfort and suffering, as my good friend Todd Telkemp says, is resistance. If you take away the resistance from suffering, you are left with discomfort. And the way Todd explained it to me a couple of weeks ago was this. He said, look, man, resistance is what makes suffering suffering. And I said, well, tell me about the resistance. He goes, well, resistance will show up as fear. Resistance will show up as inner negative conversation. Resistance will show up as a, well, the last time I tried doing something physically hard, I failed at it or I got injured. And he goes, when I think about it, if we're trying to do something hard so that we can get the growth experience from it, he goes, suffering, creating growth is not a one-to-one -one relationship. He goes, it's almost like a five or 10 to one relationship. I said, explain to me more, Todd. Well, he went on to say that suffering is 10x to 1x of growth. And when I look at it that way, I realize, well, shoot, man, I don't necessarily want to suffer. I want growth. If I'm only going to get 1x of growth when I do something difficult, do I want to suffer or do I want to be in discomfort? Well, all suffering really is, is discomfort with amplified by resistance equals suffering. And so if we could just do something that makes us uncomfortable and we could strip away the resistance of fear of the negative conversation of having that inner critic talking to you about the limiting beliefs, like, Hey, you can't do this. The last time you tried this, you failed. Then all of a sudden you take away the fear factor of suffering. And now you get a one to one ratio. See when it's discomfort, and growth, it's a one-to-one -one ratio. Your job in life, my job in life, is to step out of our comfort zone. It is to step out of our comfort zone because we know that staying in our comfort zone is gonna hurt. It's gonna create a lot of regret. It's gonna create a lot of missed experiences, a lot of missed opportunities, a lot of missed love, a lot of missed financial benefits. But we also know that staying, stepping outside of your comfort zone is scary. But when we begin to look at it through the lens of resistance of, man, what if I try this new business and it fails? What if I get into this new relationship and then marry him or her and then end up in a divorce? What if we have kids and I screw up my kids? See, when you look at it through the lens of resistance, which is fear and doubt and uncertainty, right? negative self-talk, then you begin to struggle with that decision. Do I really want to quit my job and start the business? Do I really want to take it to the next level and marry her? Do I really want to have kids? Do I really want to learn this new skill? Well, likely not, not if it's going to feel like suffering. But if it's just like, hey, you know what? Listen, I live by myself. I'm single. I'm in a place of comfort. Uh, I know that living with someone else as I get married is gonna be probably a little uncomfortable at first, but then we'll create a rhythm and we'll find our new comfort and therefore expand our comfort zone. And through that process of discomfort, we will have increased impersonal growth and development. Well, that's a fucking good thing, isn't it?
And that's what we're after, friends. That is what we're after. So remember this, the equation that Todd Telkamp shared with me, which is discomfort plus resistance equals suffering. Our job, your job, my job is to remove resistance and turn suffering into discomfort and therefore lean into discomfort, have a one-to-one -one growth relationship with discomfort, which is actually why I also do these six-week challenges. Now, if you've been following me for long enough on social media, or you've been on my email list, then you know that I do six-week challenges two to three times a year. Challenges could be anything. And, and for example, I've done rock climbing. I've taken on a six-week challenge surfing, jujitsu, MMA, uh, a marathon challenge. In fact, my first six-week challenge back in 2010 was a full marathon. See, I had convinced myself up to that point that I am designed to lift weights. I had convinced myself that God has built me to lift weights. I can bench, I can deadlift, I can squat, I can add on a lot of muscle. I'm six foot, 230 pounds. Like I am designed to move weight. I am not made to move distance. And I had put myself in that box. And I remember reading a book saying that, you know, that which you think about most is what you manifest. And so I kept thinking about how I'm not a runner, I'm not good at running, I'd never be good at running, running's not my thing. Well, I had convinced myself that running's just not my thing, that I'm not good at it. So it made sense that I would have to take on this challenge. And so rather than just saying, well, one day I'm gonna run a marathon, I committed to a particular marathon that happened to be six weeks out. It was the San Diego Rock and Roll Marathon. And I committed to that marathon because it was the like next marathon locally that was coming up, right? Because I live in Southern California. And uh, I register for it. And then I hire a running coach. Now, keep in mind, building all the way up to this point, I probably had never run more than half a mile. When I say run, I'm talking like a light trot, not even a jog, right? Like a trot walk, like a half a mile. And so I was pretty scared. I remember, I remember thinking that this is gonna be embarrassing if I get to the starting line of this marathon six weeks from now and then end up quitting three, four, five miles in because I go into a body cramp or my legs cramp or I just physically don't have the cardiovascular endurance to do it, right? Well, guess what? I hired a running coach. And the very first, the very first one, like training session was, you're going to uh, walk, jog a mile, right? Simple as that. You're gonna walk, jog a mile, nothing more than that. And then literally the next day, you're gonna walk, jog two miles. And then you're gonna take a day off to recover. And then the next day, you're gonna walk, jog, two miles. And then the day after that, you're going to walk, jog three miles and then take a day off. And then the next day after that, you're going to jog a mile, walk half a mile and jog another mile. And you can see how it's stacked up. And before you know it, about four or five weeks in, I'm like running eight miles straight. And I'm like in disbelief. I'm in disbelief because I had created the story in my head that I am not a runner, that running is suffering, that I, it's, it's painful, that I'm not gonna be good at it, that it's gonna be embarrassing when people see me fail at it. And now I'm running from Chino Hills through Diamond Bar and back into Chino and then back to Chino Hills again. Like I'm going through three cities on my feet, like my feet are moving me. I was blown away. I'm gonna be very honest with you because I was like, I, I probably bit off more than I can chew. By week, number, by week number five, I had put in 13 miles, two sessions of 13 miles. And my running coach had told me that if you can run 13 miles, you can do 26.2, which is a full marathon, right? Now, I still don't understand how running, being able to run 13 miles means that you can run 26.2, but it worked. All of a sudden, the San Diego Rock and Roll Marathon comes at 6 a.m. I'm starting at the I'm standing at the starting lines, and bam, I do this thing. 
And now because I had prepped and trained for six weeks, while it was painful, it wasn't suffering. I was absolutely in a state of discomfort from like mile three all the way to mile 26.2. But never once was I in a state of suffering. Like once I got past 13 miles, every quarter mile, if you've ever done a marathon, you know that they have these mile markers, right? And like every quarter mile or half mile, they have a marker. And I was like, holy shit, 13.5, 14 miles, 14.5, 15 miles, 15.5, 16 miles. And I'm in disbelief that my legs, my body, my feet are moving me at this distance. Now I went from 230 pounds to about 215 pounds in terms of losing weight. I lost about 15 pounds so I could be lighter and carrying that weight across the finish line. Like I was smart enough to know that there's no point in trying to hold on to a crap ton of muscle if you're gonna run a marathon because it's gonna be even more painful. But there was no suffering. See, when you're prepared, when you've trained for something, you now know what's in store. Suffering is a byproduct of the unknown. And that's why we will project out into the future and go, what if, right? So imagine like if you're like, hey, I'm just going to go. I've never run a marathon. I'm going to go register for a marathon and start, you know, not train for it. And when the gun goes off, I'm going to start running. Well, you're probably going to be suffering, one, because you're deconditioned to it, right? And so you're not going to learn any big lessons about yourself because suffering does introduce a man or discomfort does introduce a man or a woman to their, to their highest self. I call it the other room, like in your head, in everybody's head, like there's this other place that you can go to. You may have been there before. And this other room, this other place, you get to meet your other self. Napoleon Hill in his book, Outwitting the Devil, calls it the other self. And in fact, in The Power of Myth, Joseph Campbell calls it your higher self. Whether you call it your other self or your higher self, you have to access this room, this space in your head that I always picture like there's this black wall. You could see a faint cutout of where, I think this is a door, but there's no doorknob, there's no keyhole. You're pushing on it, you're trying to, get your nails in that little crack to pull the door open or push it open and you can't. But when you get to that place of discomfort where you just kind of click in, at the project we call it where the switch flips. Like during the project at some point, sometime after number 26 or 27 hours, these guys who are gonna stay, we know who the winners are gonna be in terms of graduating the project because they switched to flip. You could see it in their eyes that they've got this like fire in their eyes. All of a sudden the fear has gone away. The uncertainty has gone away. The doubt in self has gone away. They don't care what evolution instructor Ray or instructor Steve bring in terms of how punishing it's gonna be for them physically, mentally, emotionally. You could see that they are going to take on whatever the next evolution is. They're going to push through the discomfort. They're going to learn the lessons and experiences from that evolution and move on to the next one and the next one and the next one until hour 75 is over, over and, and instructor Ray secures the class by ringing the bell. That swip, switching, the flipping of that switch is what you need. And preparation gets you there because you become familiar with the process, right? So preparation is key, but also self-awareness is key. Because if you are feeling like this is scary, I have doubt, I have uncertainty, what if I can't, and you're living in the past, meaning I've tried something like this before and it hasn't worked, and in fact, I got injured, I got hurt, it was embarrassing, or you're living in the future and doing the what if game. What if I get hurt? What if I get embarrassed? What if I don't finish? What if my reputation is damaged? What if I lose? What if I, 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 I don't make it? But what if you do? See, that's the resistance that we have to remove. And so as I did the six-week challenge, the marathon challenge, I realized that, holy crap, there's a lot more in life that I can do, but I had been throttling myself. I had built this glass ceiling for myself that was limiting my growth. And that if I could break through this glass ceiling, 
in terms of running, why couldn't I break through the glass ceiling in terms of how much money I can make? And I kid you not, I started making more money the years following that marathon. I started making more money. I got in even better shape. My relationship with my wife improved even more. I was a better father. I was a better leader, a better communicator, because the truth of the matter is, and we've talked about this before on the show, how you do anything is how you do everything. And if you're willing to step out of your comfort zone, it is going to be scary and it's going to hurt, but you don't need to suffer. And you know that staying in your comfort zone is going to hurt because the hurt of regret, the hurt of missing out, the hurt of not experiencing what you should in life. So I will take the hurt of stepping out of my comfort zone, but I will remove resistance of fear, uncertainty, and doubt so that it's only discomfort and not suffering. So don't underestimate taking on physical challenges. Don't underestimate being in discomfort. Know that resistance added to discomfort equals suffering, and that's not a good one-on-one -on -one exchange. We just want discomfort and growth because that is a one-on-one -on -one exchange. <laughs>